Our next speaker, our next speaker from UBC Law is Annabelle Webb. We're here to debate not to debate, but to talk about the notion of abolishing prostitution and not legalizing it. Um, I'm, I'm usually in the easy position of making that argument in relation to teenage girls. Nobody usually questions that. They don't debate me on that point. If I say, well, let's abolish child prostitution, I don't think many would step forward to argue with me about that. My experience of working with girls who are in prostitution has been one of listening to stories of brutality and male violence. The average age of entry into prostitution, as was pointed out earlier, is 15. That's debated, you know, 14, 15, 16. Most women enter into prostitution as children, as girls. And when we talk about girls who are in prostitution, we talk about commercial sexual exploitation of children and youth. The language says this is violence. It's male violence. We're talking about it as sexual exploitation. We've got that far when it comes to children. But my question is, and I've asked this question many times, is, how is it that we make this arbitrary or artificial leap when a girl turns 19 to say that suddenly this is different? Well, I can tell you, in my understanding, the sexually abusive behavior, the sexually exploitive acts of pimps and johns doesn't change one bit when a girl turns 19. The flavor of that violence may change a little bit. Maybe when she becomes an adult, he may not want her to act as though she were the daughter that he wanted to sexually abuse at home. That may change. But fundamentally, his degrading and abusive, violent behavior remains the same. I want to talk about him and what he's doing. I'm tired of talking about women and girls and how we define their ability to consent to prostitution. The age of consent for prostitution is 18. We seem to understand when it comes to teenage girls, because the age of consent used to be 14, it's now 16. Somehow we've agreed that even though girls can consent to sexual activity, we see it as violence. We see prostitution as male violence until they hit 18, and then it changes. Well, I think that's fundamentally problematic and ridiculous. Man's abusive behavior does not change. The issue is about inequality. When men are preying on girls, when they're teenagers, when they're children. We understand that age is, is an inequality that makes them vulnerable. Why don't we make that same analysis when it comes to poverty, when it comes to colonization, when it comes to gender? Why can we not, I mean, we do agree. <laughs> Many of us agree on that, but I think Looking at the situation and our understanding and framework for how we approach children is actually very useful. And why, why do we draw an arbitrary line at 18? As I said, it's precisely women and girls' situations of inequality. It's precisely the vulnerability that is being exploited. That's what he's paying for. He is paying to dominate her. Dominance comes in many forms and can be achieved by in, in many ways. That is what he's paying for. 
We have, when it comes to girls and children in Canada, we have a law that prohibits prostitution. Um, it's not, we have this understanding when it comes to children, and I think we can extend that understanding. It's not, it is not a concept that is outside of this country even to criminalize the sexually abusive behavior of men when in and around prostitution. We're, we have that model for, for uh, child prostitution. So I think we can quite easily transport that model and continue that understanding into the adult realm. I don't want to pretend for one minute that, that, uh, that there is enforcement. <laughs> prostitution and sexual exploitation of children is absolutely tolerated in this country and I want to tell you that in the year 2007, for instance, there were exactly 24 cases in the criminal courts in Canada. Okay, So we were joking at the office earlier, well, there, I guess there's one pimp and one John in every province. <laughs> so I think it's important in the context of these conversations to remember that while there's some public perception that we do respond to child prostitution and that we are um, prosecuting men or, or pursuing men who are exploiting and abusing children in prostitution, that that actually is not happening. But at least on the books, it appears that we say no to that form of sexual exploitation. So as I said, I encourage us all to extend and, and to think about how it is that we make an arbitrary line when the male behavior, the sexually abusive acts, are exactly the same. Whether or not a girl is 17 or whether she's 21. And I think I'll leave it there. Thank, Thank you. you. And our last speaker before your participation at the microphone is Tricia Bapti of Honor Ministries and Eve. I um, want to start by saying what I think is the obvious, which is sex.